this is just how easy it is to replace the Siam Optima 49 dual flush unit. So ours has gone faulty. And what's happened with the one that we have is that when you press the button, it doesn't really hold the flush. It just uh, releases a tiny bit of water and then the uh, mechanism closes again. So it's super easy to replace if you have one of these. Let's go and take a look. So if you're installing one from scratch, you'll need this piece here. Um, that screws between the system itself and the pan and you've got your gasket there that just unscrews that big nut and this is your cradle and as you can see just here we've got some lugs and they sit into the cradle so you'll push the whole mechanism down like so and then once it's seated you'll do a turn clockwise about you know a quarter of a turn or so until this lug goes into this section here. So you can see there we are nearly closed up. And there it is. So that's how it will be fully assembled within the toilet. So of course this top half and the top half of the cradle will be visible to you when you take off the lid on the system but this piece below this nut here as you can see that will actually be underneath the system itself and this gasket here this rubber o-ring is stopping the water coming all the way through You can see what piece I've replaced actually because this is nice and white and clear and then this bit here is all very yellowed so it's been in there for a long time. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to set this value here so whatever numbers on this side here and obviously here because this cradle this piece here moves up and down you're supposed to set the same number on here you can see there's numbers here. Let's zoom in so you can see that. There we go. So you can see we're set at number four. And in theory, according to the instructions, that's supposed to be at number four as well. So they're supposed to match. So this is your kind of flush mechanism. So when you press that down, you can see that's lifting. So when that lifts, that allows the water to come out and flush your toilet so in order to flush you had to hold the button down until it emptied you've also got a couple of adjustments and this adjustment here is supposed to be for your short flush so the higher the number by sliding this down or up is the more water flushed on your short flush so if it's towards 18 that would mean the maximum amount of water would be flush on your short flush. And then this control here, that just slides back and forwards. This one is how much water is retained for the big flush. So this is the description here. In some rare cases, the residual water level, the amount of water remaining after the long flush, must be increased to ensure the most efficient cleaning. To do this, move the slider valve D which is this piece here. To the left, the more it is open, the more the residual water increases. So that's keeping water back. Increasing the residual water reduces the volume of water flushed. So a bit weird um, terminology there, but it seems to work perfectly fine in the default level, which was closed uh, just for anyone wondering about that one but if anyone really knows how that works let me know and here's a description about matching number four here to number four in the hole so there's four there and then there's four on the holes so to adjust the height you press these tabs in and that allows you then to raise the carriage. So there we go, we can actually take the whole thing out. 
and there's the mechanism to lock that into place. There's one of these tabs either side. And when you press it in, you can actually slide that out of this little section here, out of the collar, bring it up and out of the way. But I wanted to see what was inside these, so giving it a bit of a butcher. Uh -huh. And that's what's inside. So quite a lot more complex than I thought, actually. So there seems to be this this section here is for the short flush adjustment. And that seems to be like some sort of float there, doesn't it? You can see there it's on this toothed section. Connected down here. So when you press and that raises up, connected by this cam here. Um, then you've got this piece here, take it out by adjusting the uh, section here to adjust your short flush level. All you're doing really is you're moving this float higher or lower within the system itself, within the mechanism. So I guess when you press, press the short flush, uh, it allows a certain amount of water to leave. And if you have it fully open, that would be near the bottom, so allowing more water to leave. So that short flush would be up here, probably just allowing you know a little bit of water out right down here, getting the full body of water out, and that'd be the main flush where that would actually or should in this case fully lift and allow all the water to escape until uh, the water's disappeared, and then by gravity that falls back down again. So kind of simple, but also very complex to do the dual flush. But as you can see, common issue here, look. This explains why we were always seeing water seeping down into the actual uh, pan. You can see that's actually cracked. So that's aged. All that rubber's gone hard. So that's no use anymore. Uh, to be fair though, what's the age on this? 2008. So it's done pretty good service. But yeah, so it's quite complex. So when you pay, you know, fifteen pounds for this, you're getting quite a bit of mechanism. A lot more pieces than I'd expect to see in there. But yeah, so there's your dual float system: one for the short flush, one for the main flush, and there's your manual to get it all plumbed in. So here's the button. So you've got two options here. You've got two sections of the button. Uh, if you were to press the small piece here, as you can see the gap, that opens a certain amount. But if you press the main bit, you get a bit extra. Not much. I don't know if you can see that. So there's the short flush. And there's the full flush. So we're talking only a couple of mil. So there's the short flush. And there's the full flush. So just with the light on there, you can see how this sits in there. The piece at the very bottom is the top of the cradle. And you can see the rubber gasket there. And then between here and the actual pan is where that nut is. And this just push down and twist into the cradle and you'll feel it lock into place. And as you can see, you may be able to see I'm fully down on that small adjustment for short flush to allow maximum water. And then you may be able to see the hole there at the bottom, that grey piece, that's set to closed. Um, the water actually in this system sits quite low, as you can see, we're probably only supposed to have uh, 20 mil or so of water there. You can cut this pipe to adjust it, but this is quite a small system itself and it's quite a way down from the top. So when I next replace this piece here, I will allow for uh, more water to fill into here. That float is at its maximum stop, allowing you know the amount of water that it can, the maximum amount of water it can, but it's yeah, it's pretty low. 
So quite efficient, I guess, but not ideal should you need a full flush. So yeah, that'll be the next thing to replace. And um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll adjust it so that the water sits a bit higher, but it works okay. And then let's have a little look. I think it screws about five or so times and we'll do a full flush. So that bit where it lifted and stayed up until all the water was emptied, that wasn't happening. So definitely a fault there. And now at least we do empty the water. And you can see it's filling back up again. Quite neat. So yeah, that's the uh, Siamp Optima 49 flush mechanism. Interesting.